They say necessity is the mother of invention, and for Mary Keene, a single mother of four, in the 1970s, her need was an alternative milk source for her four daughters. Where they lived in rural Humboldt County, there weren't a whole lot of options around, until she saw what her neighbors were using for brush control, goats. They had goats for brush control, and I asked the woman if I could buy a goat, thinking I would milk it and we would have this good milk. And the woman laughed and said, honey, if you can catch one, you can have it. So I went every day and put a little grain out, and then gradually these goats got a little closer and I caught two goats. And with those two goats came two more, and two more, and so on and so forth, until Mary found herself with a lot of goats and a lot of goat milk. So she started experimenting with cheese making, and in 1983, with a somewhat regular customer base, she officially opened Cypress Grove Goat Cheese. And the rest, they say, is history. Today, Cypress Grove has grown to become a leading producer of American goat cheese, and Mary is known as a pioneer in the world of artisanal cheese making. They are now milking more than 900 goats at what they affectionately call their country club for goats in Humboldt County, and they're not joking. Each day, the staff here milks animals to the sweet sounds of soft jazz, music tunes that create a calming routine not only for the employees, but for the animals. Well, we're listening to Jenner Jazz on, yep, on the uh, on the radio. Yep, we uh, we started playing some classical a while back, and found it a little bit too dramatic for the goats, and so we started playing some smooth jazz, some dinner jazz. We find that uh, the lack of lyrics and just this, you know, the overall tone of it really suits the goats. Uh, they don't get startled, and they come to enjoy it. It's a relationship that we have. Uh, we take care of the goats and they take care of us. And you know, we're the animals and the goats, we're a working team. While the goats are enjoying their own notes at the dairy, they're taking notes from their surrounding area at the nearby creamery, including that famous foggy coastline to create cheeses with fun names like Purple Haze and Herbs de Humboldt. And all are molded to perfection at their state-of-the-art facility. So this room, at, right after the milk gets pasteurized, this is the next home for the milk. And then it'll move over to that curd press to separate that curd from the whey. So here we have uh, the curd from the curd press bags. You can see it's in little flat sheets right now. And right now the curd's ready to be mixed with salt and have flavor added to it, depending on the recipe. And the mixing process here is where we add the salt and the flavor. Um, we don't want to over mix our cheese because if we do, it will really break down the fat and it'll start to really soften the cheese. And after mixing different flavors into the cheese, like pepper or lavender or dill pollen, this is the prime time to taste. All right, so here we have some freshly mixed psychedelic, um, just with a simple incorporation of a little bit of salt and some dill. Okay, cheers. Cheers, Woo. changes the whole flavor profile. Oh my god. Mm. It's, the, it's the dill pollen. <laughs> it's the dill. It's you guys, but it's also the dill yeah, pollen. Yeah, yeah, we do a little bit yeah. of the work. From here, the cheese moves to drying and ripening rooms, and then it's packaged up before being shipped all over the world. And the cheese they make the most of is this Humboldt Fog, a cheese that has a very distinctive vegetable ash in the middle and all around to control the pH level and thus control the flavoring of the cheese as it ages. It's one of the most labor intensive cheeses around. It's made by hand and turned every day for weeks until it forms its cake-like appearance. It has grown to become one of the most widely renowned goat cheeses in the entire world and is made now in a variety of interesting sizes, shapes, and smells. So over in the corner we have truffle cheese. Oh, okay. So it's a combination of that truffle cheese with the humble fog, both starting the aging process today. Um, and that smell is probably one of my favorite smells oh, in the yeah. entire oh, facility. Okay, because okay. yeah. I walked in it was real punch and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But it's good. It's good. It's a good smell. It's a good smell. Okay. Yep. This cheese is actually designed for chefs. So when you cut it, you get rind on all three sides and it looks really nice on a cheese plate. One restaurant that knows a thing or two about a cheese plate is Larapin in the tiny town of Trinidad, also in Humboldt County. 
They've been making up cheese plates with Cypress Grove goat cheese from the beginning, in the early 1980s, when both businesses were just starting out. The goat cheese was definitely one that had to stay on the menu because it really is um, a, a Humboldt, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a Humboldt cheese and everyone knows it, everyone's very familiar with it. Our cheeses tonight are, of course, Cypress Grove. This is the fromage and we also have the Humboldt Fog. It's just really fun to work with people that you know and trust and trust really makes a big difference. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Take care. Yeah. Then I decided to give my taste buds a treat and explore the goat cheese world with Cypress Grove's own tasting expert to learn the nuances to eating, selecting, and pairing this tangy treat. So the best part now is getting to taste the cheese, which you don't have to ask me twice to do. Okay. So Bob, you're going to kind of take us through a little pairing here. Yes. Is there a certain order we should go in? There you is. Tell me. Okay. There is. Let's start with uh, our fresh Fresh chev, let's call it. That's hard and this, to say. yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not let's just call it fromage blanc. That's a little easier. So this is what I consider our basic building block, and this is a very simple cheese, uh, ways removed, um, and a uh, little some some salt, a little bit of salt, and cultures added. And what what you taste here is just oh the basic building blocks of everything else. So what is almost as important as what you don't taste there, you don't get that goaty funk, no, right? No, not at all. And so that means you have good milk, okay. you're transporting it properly, and you have a good clean facility and you know what you're doing. Okay. So now we've got uh, the capability of making some good cheese. They not only know what they're doing here, but they've perfected it by reinventing the wheel, the cheese wheel that is, and with a mantra that we can all appreciate. We take our fun and our cheese seriously. Because if you don't have a good time, what's the point, you know? So we really do.